Uh, as schools break up for the summer, some of the, the graduating class of 2024 will be preparing for university and the daunting world of student finance. Well, from navigating loans to managing debt, our money-saving expert Martin Lewis is here to help. Thank Hi, you, Martin, so is much. It, is it a debt? That's, a, that's actually the big question. Uh, we call it a student loan. Yeah. But as I'm going to explain, in practical terms, for most people, it works more like a form of additional tax. I'm not saying it's cheap, I'm not saying it's easy, but actually, this is a, this is a situation that's so misunderstood, it's misnamed, it's misframed. The political spittle that flies over student finance leaves many people confused. Today, I want to focus on the practicals, not the politics. But for, for students from England, there was a massive shake-up about a year ago, yeah, which means it's going to be much more expensive to go to university. I'll come, come to why later, because it's complicated. I'm going to try and lead on the English system, and I will try and mention the systems in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but it is quite difficult uh -huh. to explain all four systems. Yeah. They're slightly different. Okay. But that's what we're going to try and do today, to try and demystify student finance for you. OK, so let's help people understand. The student loan price tag can be £60,000. But, for example, but that's not what you pay. So where do you want to start? So let's, let's break down the 60,000. If you're in England, you're paying tuition fees of 9,250 pounds a year on a mm -hmm. three-year course. You're getting a maintenance loan as well that could be 10,000 pounds. It easily adds up to 60 grand. In other UK nations, you might not have tuition fees in Scotland. You might have a lower loan. So the, low, the, the number tends to be smaller. And that's what people focus on. But that's actually not that relevant. The student loan company pays your tuition fees for you and gives you a loan to live off. You then repay starting the April after you leave university based on a threshold. Now, yep. for English starters now, that threshold is £25,000. And you will repay 9% of everything you earn over £25,000. If you were... To the tune of 60000 like, like, as in, like, well, that's the scene. Forget the 60,000. Okay. Just forget the 60,000 for the moment. We'll come to that because it, it doesn't, because there's interest on that. But does that 9%, not sorry to interrupt, but does that, does that 9% not chip away at the, at the original loan? It depends. It depends on what the interest rate is and how much you're actually paying. So for many people who want their old Plan 2 loans, no, they, they won't repay it. Right. Right, which is what, it's exactly the point. Most people, I'm skipping ahead, most people are just going to pay 9% for most of their working life. So the actual loan you have, the amount you owe, the amount you borrow is relevant. I mean, let's do this now. I'll, I'll go ahead. Let's be really simple. You pay 9% of everything you earn above 25 grand. Yeah. Right? If you earn less than 25 grand, you don't pay anything. So let's take a scenario for you here. You owe £20,000. Your student loan is £25,000. Mm -hmm. You earn £35,000, mm -hmm. which is 10000 above the threshold, mm -hmm. and you repay 9% of everything above the threshold. What are you going to repay? £900 of £10,000. 9% of £10,000, 900 quid. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's imagine you borrowed £60,000. You still earn, just for ease of numbers, thirty-five grand. How much are you going to repay? I'm now lost. Right, so you've got higher borrowing, you repay 9% of everything above 25 grand. You're earning 35,000, how much do you repay? It's another 10 grand on top, it's so you still, pay another 9%. No, it's no another, you still pay 9% of 10 grand. You're still earning 35 grand, you're still earning 10 grand above the threshold. Right. Still, now let's imagine they put tuition fees up to a million pounds a year, you owe three million pounds. How much do you repay if you earn 35 grand? You still repay 9% of everything above the threshold, you still repay 900 pounds. Do you see the point? Yeah. Yes. What you owe does not affect what you repay each year. What you repay each year is solely based on what you earn. Mm. So if you earn 35 grand, no matter what you owe, you repay 900 pounds a year. If you earn 26 grand, one grand above the threshold, you repay 90. If you earn 125,000 pounds, 100 grand above the threshold, you know, you repay 9,000 pounds. That's what matters. The only thing what you owe changes is whether or not you'll clear the loan before it wipes. Now, for new English starters, it wipes after 40 years. Other countries, it's 30 years. Most people will be repaying for 30 or 40 years. Most people now, about half will repay in the 40 years, but most of those that do repay will repay in the last few years. So, conceptually, people sit there worried about the, oh, I owe all this debt. What happens if I don't earn enough? Well, you'll never repay it. Yeah. It's, it's misnamed. It should be called a graduate contribution system. That's what they call it in all other countries. It works more like a 9% additional tax above the threshold. So, for most people, that's how it works. And for most people, you're, you've got to start to think of this as, I'm going to add 9% to my tax rate. So you have, I have parents who will scare their kids off from going to university because they're like, what if you don't get a good job? How are you going to repay the debt? Well, the system is actually designed 
as a no-win, no-fee system. If right. you don't get a financial benefit from going to university, you don't repay. If you do, you contribute. My hope to you watching out there or for your children like that, I hope university costs them a fortune because that means they're earning a fortune. OK. It, do you, get, do you understand why do. it's... It's such a brain fuddle. It is, it really... So, you, basically, you're saying, don't worry. Don't Look, worry. It's expensive. A 9% additional tax. If I said I'm about to put your tax rate up by 9%, you wouldn't tell me not to worry. No. What I'm saying is, people worry, and they come to me and say, what about the debt? My, I don't want to put my kids in debt. Look, the honest truth of this system is when it was launched by Tony Blair, every other country calls it a graduate contribution system mm -hmm. or something like that. Tony Blair was scared of introducing new taxes because it's framed like a tax. So they called it a student loan in this country because they didn't want to introduce new taxes because of the politics ah. at the time. It's misnamed. Now, of course, you don't have to take it, so it isn't a graduate tax, but it works far more like a tax. Your kids go to university, they don't earn much, they won't repay much. Your kids go to a university, they earn a lot, they will repay a lot because there's interest added on top. Uh, the loan, as I say, is whacked after 40 years. The other thing to understand, no debt collectors, right? because you repay through the payroll, just like you pay tax. Right. The, right? So basically, it, if you're PAYE, it's like, a, like it's, another it's, version it's of PAYE. It is exactly like PAYE. So for those, if you're younger and you don't know, when you get paid and you work for an employee, they take your tax off before you get the money, while they take your student loan repayment off before you get the money too. So what you get in your pay packet is what you actually have to spend, because your student loan's gone. So there are no debt collectors, because you can't avoid paying. And we, listen, we, get, we, we have to wrap up, because we, we, we're okay. going to probably focus on this later as well. Is there a world, though, where you can pay off lump sums, or is it not even worth it? You, you can always pay off lump sums, but for many people it isn't worth it, and it depends which plan you're on. There are five different student loan plans. I'd certainly be nervous at doing it if I was on Plan 2, which is the one most people are on. The new plan, Plan 5, it may be better off. The thing, if we don't have much time, that we must talk yep. about is the parental contribution. Please do. Right. Under 25-year-olds going to university, the amount they get to live off is dictated by a means test of family mm -hmm. income. Now, that's a proxy for parental income. So you might be old enough to vote, old enough to marry, old enough to get shot in for our army, but you are not treated as financially independent under the student finance system. Your parental income counts. Now, there's a full loan. At £25,000, you start to get less than the full loan. £25,000 combined family income. Could be both parents. Twenty five grand's not that much. By sixty to seventy grand, you get the minimum loan, which is about half the full loan. Parents, it's not written, but, of course, the only reason they're reducing the loan is because they're expecting parents to fill the gap. So there is an implied parental contribution, which is the gap between the full loan, which isn't enough and isn't going up by inflation enough, and the minimum loan. That can be 20 grand mm -hmm. over the course of somebody going to university. It's a real hit yeah. for middle earners. If you've got it, my daughter's about to start senior school. I think oh, that's the her. time you should all be thinking and going online, doing a parental contribution calculator, it's not the tuition fees, but realising how much am I going to need to save to fund this maintenance loan? Because that's going to be a really tricky part of finance. I know we're winding up now. We've got a phone in coming. I will do more on the parental Absolutely. contribution. Thank you. It's so crucial. much to talk about. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say thank you for visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. Now, listen, we upload new content every day. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And we'll see you in the morning.